Well, welcome back to Finance Uncut. On today's episode, 61% gain coming. gain coming, but in what? Well, let's cut to a clip with Tavi Costa. So two things following off of that. One is if you look at the gold silver ratio, it's still favoring gold. So there's there's potentially a catch up moment here for silver, even at current gold prices. But obviously if the gold price heads where you think it's gonna go, Tavi, silver is gonna go off to the races, correct? I think silver is the cheapest metal on earth. I'm on record for saying that a few times. I think uh, it's it's almost uh, ridiculous to be able to be buying silver sub $30 an ounce. Uh, Some days even sub $25 an ounce is 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 a huge opportunity in our opinion. And so, you know, we we have, you know, you find a few projects that have uh, a very large silver discoveries. Uh, you know, imagine the value of those if silver goes to $50 an ounce. That's not too much too much of an of a stretch. Uh, if you look at the the history of what you just said, which is the gold and silver ratio, that is at about 70 70 or so, I would say 75 or 74 uh, depending on the day. Um, and you know, when you looked at that throughout history Taking out the, what we saw in, in in March of 2020, which was uh, I would say perhaps a, a different period. Uh, you know, those are times that are very unique uh, in terms of the the timing for you to be allocating capital towards silver. Uh, I think that that if there was ever a time again to be allocating capital in silver, that time is today. Uh, and so uh, we are very focused on that. And in regards to the supply side of silver, is also very interesting because silver. Silver falls into not only the monetary metal aspect of it, uh, of of a trade, but also into this green revolution situation where it really fits into as a metal that may serve as uh, a supply to to a lot of the developments in the electrification period that we may see in the following years, which falls into the fiscal agenda and so forth. And so uh, we think that, you know, silver is is, is a very interesting play uh, and something that we're really long uh, we have a very large exposure in our in our portfolio today as well great and just for the folks watching who may not be aware of this there are actually very few pure play silver mines out there silver largely is a byproduct of other mining so if you want more silver out of the ground it's it's harder to just say oh i'm going to go find a big silver deposit you have to kind of get it through these other types of, of mining activities all right so where i was headed with this tavi is we just talked about how um uh, both technically and fundamentally, uh, we can exp- you know, make a really good case for higher prices for gold, uh, maybe even you know, more extreme appreciation for silver as it catches up, right? Now you have a chart here that shows that um, uh, you calculate given the current gold price, which is around 1850, 1860 uh, dollars an ounce, that um, just looking at historic valuation, um, uh, relationships, the miners should be about 61% higher, valued at 61% higher than they are today. You're not in here again, right? So th- th- there already is an optionality there of just, or an arbitrage there of like, they just seem relatively undervalued to the metal itself, correct? That That's right. I, I think the chart you're referring to is the one that looks at the monthly price of gold, which is already above the levels again, uh, after the sell-off that we saw recently, it's it's actually above the levels that we saw in the peak of 2011. And if we just apply the same idea, the miners are going to go back to retest the 2011 highs. That that really implies a 60 plus percent return from here. Obviously, we think that given the risk and the leverage to the gold and silver price, uh, we think the miners are going to go much higher. And on top of it, the fundamental story is nowhere close to where it was back in 2011. It's significantly better. Uh, to what Kevin was talking about, about the gray rotation and this prioritization to profitability, well, if there is one profitable place to be invested in, that's the mining space in the, in the precious metals and base metals. Basically, most of commodity companies are in that space of profitability. So uh, we think that that's uh, you know that that's a big part of it. I think the, the the miners could potentially become the new growth stocks of the next ten years or so. Uh, and so that's why we like to be taking up risk here and and go into more illiquid and perhaps more of a deep value opportunity 
uh, where we think the liquidity is going to come in uh, to where uh, our investments are today. So uh, there's certainly a need for exploration. There's certainly a need for developments of mines. Uh, and with gold and silver prices going higher, in our opinion, uh, regardless if it is through real rates or further disorder in the monetary and fiscal side or further amounts of leverage in the system, uh, we think that that's going to be driving tangible assets higher and at some point will drive also liquidity to the miners. So miners are our favorite industry right now to be, to be long at this point. So I'll put a link in the description below to the Wealthian video. Uh, you can watch a full video. It's a two-part video with Tavi Costa. It's an absolute brilliant one. So uh, yeah, check it out. So before we get to some charts, I just want to highlight this video I did recently uh, called Silver Price Explosion, where I shared Tavi Costa from Crescat Capital's uh, article, the macro case for silver. And in that, we go through some of these charts, but we, we look at it uh, more in depth. So I'll put a link in the description below uh, to this. Definitely check this out. So it's perhaps a little wrong to say 61% gain coming. Uh, it's probably more accurate to say that gold and silver stocks are 61% undervalued based on their underlying metal. Uh, and that has provided a huge opportunity for me this year to accumulate both the miners and explorers. And I've predominantly been buying the mid to small uh, tier miners so producers, uh, and been investing heavily in the exploration side of uh, this sector as well, because I, as, a, as an investor, as a speculator, I've had some success in this. I've also had some losses, but they've been uh, wonderful learning curves. And so I, I don't mind looking for, for stocks that are going to give me a 5 to 10x uh, potential increase with perhaps maybe a 50% uh, you know, downside uh, in this. So, and usually I'm able to um, reduce that, that downside risk, but um, it definitely is great, uh, great time to be buying the miners. So clearly we're very bullish, the underlying metals. So, you know, look at the fundamentals, whether you want to look at the uh, amount of M2, the amount of new currency, uh, CPI, inflation, real rates, whatever. You know, just on this chart, you can see that we expect gold going higher. Now this chart's slightly a little bit old because we know that uh, gold is about $100 more than that at the moment. Uh, but based on this chart, we, we should be seeing close to $2,200 gold, which, once again, is just going to, uh, you know, for the miners, uh, create even more value. And we definitely see more upside to silver. Once again, just look at the fundamentals, whether it's from the demand side, from, you know, uh, Indian and Chinese demand, whether it's investment demand, uh, the industrial demand, or, or you know, as uh, uh, the institutional investors start coming into the sector, then we're going to see the, the price of silver, in our opinion, uh, go up and go up quite a lot and, and quite fast. And so this is where uh, we think the uh, silver miners are really going to outperform. Uh, but we need to position ourselves before this play, plays out. And sometimes that means investing before it plays out and then having some patience and now, a lot of investors don't have patience because they're not investors. They're uh, traders or speculators. So we do think that uh, now is the time to be moving out of growth and into value stocks. I am predominantly a fundamental value investor. However, I do break up my portfolio into, I guess, different allocations. So I do have a part of my portfolio which is... Basically, I, I sell options. I, I treat it as a business. Uh, I, I sell options uh, predominantly uh, naked puts and, and covered calls, but um, sometimes I do spreads as well. Uh, but I look at that as a business, and that is just one part of my portfolio. I then have my value stocks, and 
you know, dividend uh, paying stocks. So I look for deep value. I look for high dividend paying stocks or, or income stocks. Sometimes I can uh, add REITs into, into this part of my portfolio uh, allocation. At the moment, I'm not holding any REITs. Um, I'm, I'm not keen on especially office type REITs, uh, perhaps, uh, you know, um, industrial REITs and some other type of REITs uh, may look attractive uh, in the future, but for me, not right now. Uh, and then I have a portion of my portfolio in, in growth uh, stocks. Uh, so these are stocks that I, I'm really looking at. Uh, earnings, uh, earnings growth, return on capital, return on equity. Uh, I, I really want to see um, you know, not so much the um, stock price growing, but the earnings growing. Um, but you know, there's other factors that I take into account when I'm buying growth stocks. But uh, I have been taking a lot of profits in this sector, so my uh, allocation of growth stocks is is very trim at the moment. Um, and then and then I have my trading, so where I'm buying uh, options. And, and trading stocks. So uh, that's how I kind of break up my uh, stock portfolio. Then I have, you know, obviously my physical precious metals. I have um, uh, real estate, actual real estate, rental uh, real estate. And, you know, then, then I also look at, you know, sectors within those different allocations. And, and that comes down to my macro analysis and, and whatnot. But right now, we think that uh, it's probably a good time uh, to take some profits on that because growth has performed exceptionally well and value uh, seems quite valuable. So, you know, Russell 1000 growth versus value. Um, you know, these are, this isn't financial advice. This is just what I'm doing and everyone's got to make up their own mind and based on their own personalities and their own risk um you know and risk profiles uh but but we think that that growth is certainly uh it's getting toppy it can continue to go further the central banks continue to do what they do and and just refuse to taper refuse to to raise rates and and just keep putting liquidity into the system then you know uh this thing can continue going much much higher uh, but we just don't like taking on that type of risk. You know, and you look at tech stocks, uh, free cash flow yield, and yeah, you know, we go back to these sort of levels uh, and, and we know what happened. Uh, so once again, it's, I'm not saying that these can't continue going higher and for longer, but everything is all about risk and reward. And for, for mine, I'd rather take, uh, the risk in the uh, mining exploration space and get the, the those big big returns, ten uh, x type returns with you know the fifty percent potential downside. For me, that that is um, a better risk benefit analysis. So you compare that to the gold and silver miners uh, free cash flow. Uh, it it really uh, makes sense to me. And the big one, which you know, I'm quite excited about, is mergers and acquisitions haven't really uh, occurred yet in this sector. And I believe they will. I believe they will because the big boys will need to uh, ac accumulate uh, assets. So some of the explorers that I'm, uh, that I'm in, some of, some of them will never become a producer. Uh, they will they will be bought out. They will be taken over, and um, or, or merged with other other firms. And in those cases, generally, uh, in the past, I've I've had you know three to five x type returns. Uh, and so I, I'm okay with that. And that's why I'm in that space. Uh, sometimes you get the northern stars that uh, you know do go from five cents to seventeen dollars and become a producer, become a miner. Uh, other other times, uh, you know, um, the explorers are uh, uh, selling to uh, being acquired by the by the big boys, and you get multiples on that. So, you know, I think we're going to see this play out in the in the next little while. Um, 
And this is going to be very, very bullish. Well, it's going to be very, very good for the quality uh, exploration firms who who do have um, both high grade, but also you know um, actual resources in the ground. And um, once again, this is why I like uh, that side of the business and why I like taking on that risk for the upside gain there. And I've shared these charts before, uh, you know, in in the last uh, gold and silver bull markets that we've had. So you, know, you buy the right stocks, and uh, you know they outperform gold. You get that leverage on the underlying metal. So if you're bullish the underlying metal, uh, then you want to have some exposure to the miners. And you can see that the silver miners uh, actually uh, outperformed those those gold miners. You know, the gold miners really, really did uh, perform well just in that, you know, it's only a short period of time. When the bull market's on, uh, these things perform. And this was really a good time. And this is uh, when I got into into the silver market during this time. Got a little bit lucky, I admit. Uh, but both the underlying silver price of the metal, but the silver miners uh, also performed exceptionally well. So I've done some videos on investing in the miners and explorers. And in this video I did called Investing in Gold, Silver Miners and Explorers, which I'll put a link in the description below. Um, I shared uh, basically how I value uh, mining stocks and exploration stocks in particular. Uh, and I gave this example of Northern Star. And this is as a speculator in this sector, this is what we're trying to find. We're trying to find the next Northern Star, you know, and uh, you can see here Northern Star in July uh, 2010 was trading at five cents. It's actually currently trading just a bit above ten dollars today, but uh, August last year all-time high seventeen dollars. So a ten thousand dollar investment in Northern Star would be almost three and a half million dollars at its peak, uh, or, or over two million dollars at its current trading uh, range. So in my next video. And it's probably going to be my next video, but don't hold me to that if uh, if it's a video after. I'm currently working on it anyway, uh, because I've previously mentioned in a couple of recent videos uh, this book. Put it on this side. Uh, this book by D Doug Casey, uh, Crisis Investing, and how it's had a big impact on me and my investment philosophy, in particular in the commodities and gold and silver mining and exploration sector, and so. Uh, just just keep an eye out for my next video, if not the next the one after that. It, it'll be entitled Crisis Investing. Uh, keep an eye on that because what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to share with you guys uh, some of the key things that I learnt in this book. Uh, I'm going to share it with you. Uh, if you haven't yet read this book, absolutely find it. I don't know where you can get it at. I don't even remember where I bought this one from. But I'll also share some stories of my stocks uh, that have done well. Uh, one of my stocks just in the last two years, um, uh, I invested $10,000 and that turned into over $250,000 uh, just in the last two years. And so I'll talk a little bit about that and um, yeah, just share uh, the key things from, from Doug Casey, who is an absolute legendary investor in this space um, yeah along with rick rule and eric sprott you know if you guys are passionate about investing in this space if you're not following those gentlemen and learning everything you can from them then uh, you're doing yourself a disservice so uh stay tuned for that but anyway guys if you like this video uh give us that uh, thumbs up hit that like button really do appreciate it love to see your thoughts and uh, opinions in the comments below uh what do you guys think uh do you guys think uh that Gold and silver stocks are uh, ripe for the picking. Do you think the tech stocks are overvalued? Uh, do you think there's going to be a uh, rollover into this sector? Anyway, love to see your thoughts and opinions in the comments below. Take care, and I'll see you again on another episode of Finance Uncut.